Но еще вопрос, вот это так и будет отображаться на трансляции или... All right, so we are starting, right? All right. Um, yeah, sorry about the delay. I see that we are kind of five minutes late, but uh, yeah, it was a bit of a technical um, trouble here. So yeah, our today's topic, well, yeah, actually, let me introduce myself first, I guess. My name is uh, Maxim Tesla. My name, yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. I am an iOS developer here in uh, Anderson. And uh, today I'm going to be telling you about uh, actually working with SPM. Uh, also known as Swift Package Manager, and uh, actually handling packages in applications with multiple targets. But that's not going to be like the only topic we are going to be discussing today. As well, we are going to be going through how you can use SPM packages, how you can create, import them, and how you can um, work with them so you can get a lot of uh, fruitful stuff into your applications. So yeah. Um, I guess we're going to be starting with uh, some kind of general characteristic of what Swift packages are. So, as you can see on the slide, they are reusable code components of Swift, Objective-C, Objective-C++, C or C++ code that developers can have in their projects. They bundle source files, binaries, and resources in the way that's easy um, to use in your application's project. Uh, so Xcode supports uh, creating and publishing Swift packages, as well as adding, removing, and uh, managing package dependencies. Um, its support for Swift packages is built on the top of the open source Swift Package Manager project. So that's the source uh, where you are able to see uh, a lot of useful stuff for Swift Package Manager. So first statement is, creating a package is not hard at all. Um, let's try it out. So here you can see the um, uh, you can see the plain uh, Swift UI project. That's just what you're gonna get if you create a Swift UI application. Uh, just an app with uh, one view. Uh, it has a body, and that's it. Uh, in order to create a package, you go here, you open file, new, and you create a package. You choose a package, and so then this window is gonna pop up. You select the library, then you can actually uh, apply any kind of name you want. Um, after that, you can uh, uh, click below, and uh, you have to add it to a certain application, to a certain project. Uh, after you do that, uh, you can as well add it to a certain group. You can see it on the bottom. And uh, after you do all that, you can press Create. And what you get is a package. Uh, just a plain regular package, which uh, has been created, uh, as you can see on the left hand, it's going to generate a so-called package that's Swift file for you. That's going to be, uh, in simple words, a manifest, which is going to describe this particular package. So let's take a closer look into what is included inside of this package. So first field is Swift Tools version. So in this particular case, it auto it has auto generated the uh, uh, Swift Tools version 5.9, that's the current one, and that line actually defines what kind of Swift tools are going to be used in order to uh, run your package. So some features are uh, present in some Swift tools. So uh, if you have, for example, plugins, we will talk about it a bit further, uh, you have to start with uh, Swift Tools 5.6 because that's the earliest one in which plugins are present. After that, you define the name of the package. Well, as you've named this library, you've created the package name, then it automatically generated the name, package name. After that, you have products. So products are actual libraries which you are going to import into your project. So uh, projects, as you can see, they have those libraries. Uh, they can have a name and targets. Well, those are not the only uh, properties are which are available for you, but that's like the minimum set which you need. So you give your product, your library, a name, and also you define a target on which this particular right library depends. Uh, then after that, you can define targets which are uh, gonna exist inside of your um, package. 
So in this particular case, this one is auto-generated as well. You have a target which has a name, target name, and you have a test target which uh, actually defines all of the stuff which is uh, related to a test target inside of that. So that's vanilla stuff. That's what you're going to get out of the box if you create a package. So let's play around. But first, let me uh, make some minor changes into that auto-generated package file. So we are going to delete like pretty much all of the comments which are not really needed for us. And we are going to have some kind of changes into names we have here. So for example, we uh, inside of the products, we define the uh, name of this particular library as a package name lib. So we know further when we import it and use it that this is going to be the library and that's going to be the target. Because as you see in the bottom, for targets, we um, say that uh, this particular target is going to have the target name, package name target. And this library, as you can see, is going to depend on this uh, package name target. Uh, you will see that. Right now, that might not like have any sense for you, but uh, um, hang tight. We will get to that further. So uh, there is a function. What do we do? We go to the um, source uh, sources of this particular package, and we uh, define one file. Actually, we create one file, which is going to be called package name. What it's going to have? It's going to contain only one simple function. And this function is going to be named greet the world. What it's going to do? It's just going to print hello world. Pretty same stuff. As you can see from the project structure on the left hand, um, that is created inside of our local package, which is added to our project. Um, if we go to our content view, you can see the project folder and project structure on the left. So that's um, so that, that can become more clear to you. Um, if we try to add uh, our function into any code which exists inside of our project, because this um, content view is the part of our test application, this plain test application which has been created by us. So as all of that created with help of Swift, uh, with help of a Swift UI, um, we have this text um, which has a text some view. And then we have this view modifier on appear, which uh, gives us the possibility to perform any action uh, which is to be done when this particular view appears. So what we try to do, we try to use and we try to place here this greet the world function, greet the world. So, um, but it says to us that the compiler or the linker isn't able to find get the world in scope, but why? We have, as you can see on the left hand again in the project folder structure, we have our package name inside of our application. When we've been creating this package, we've added it to a group of the project. So that might be obvious that, all right, that thing should be available for us inside of our whole project. But unlikely, no. Some of you might say, well, Maxim, that indeed understandable. You haven't imported the package, you haven't imported the package name. So that's like how the dependencies work. In order for the dependencies functionality to appear inside of the file, you have to import this dependency and only then this dependency is gonna be available. So I try to import the package name and that's gonna be that uh, package I've created already. But I try to import it and it tells me that no such model package name. Again, why? As I know that I have imported that into my uh, project already. Well, I mean, that's not all we have to do in order to have that dependency in our project. So what you have to do is you have to go here. So you have to go uh, to that uh, uh, project uh, menu, uh, which you have, and it's kind of uh, super standard for any project. You have to select a particular target into which you want to add your package. You have to press, press this plus, and uh, this kind of view is going to appear. It's just going to offer you any standard libraries which exist inside of this particular project. So uh, in the bottom, uh, you can see all of that, uh, all of those uh, libraries which are system libraries. And on the top, you can see that uh, local package you've just added. So you select the package itself, the library it has. And as you see, uh, inside of this um, window, we have a package name lib. So if you, if you remember that, we've renamed the particular product, the particular library, to have a name, package name lib. So in here, for this target, we are importing the library. So you click Add, 
And so now this library is present in uh, this particular project and this particular target. And so we go further. And right now, as you can see in this content view, we are able to import package name target. And as you can see in our function on appear, we can call for this greet the world function. And then in the console in the bottom, you can see that we have this hello world printed. So that's how it should be handled. And let's go through it really quick. So uh, on the left hand, we have the application. The application can have a target. Well, I mean, it will have at least one target. And so in this target, we can have a lot of files imported. So the application, as you can see, adds a package into its, its scope. It can be either a local package or a remove package. Remove package is going to be added with help of some link from the GitHub. Well, I mean, I'm sure that you've done that if you've used uh, the SPM already. Or it can be added locally, like we did. Uh, the package is going to contain a library, which is a product of this package. And a library is going to contain a target, which at the same time is going to is going to have like a lot of files. And so target of the application adds a library and file imports a target, which has files. And with help of that operation, we have the code, which is defined in files of target uh, in our file, which exists inside of the application. Um, that was the first part. So the second part is going to be started with that kind of statement. So you can generate files in directories within a package. Uh, for that, you will need a plugin. Well, but not only a plugin, actually. Um, there are two types of plugins. Uh, those are command line plugins and build tool plugins. So command line plugins, they are being fired manually by the developer from Xcode. And as well, they can ask for permission to modify uh, package sources. Uh, so if you try to, like, Imagine some kind of example of command line plugin. This is just going to be a kind of file generating tool, the same as I don't know, some kind of shell script you are able to run from the terminal. Uh, so, but that stuff is going to be available for you from uh, from the Xcode itself, and uh, you will be able just to uh, get it done with a right click and uh, generate any stuff you want or uh, do. Well, actually, whatever you want and whatever you have defined in this in this uh, command plugin. But we are not going to be talking about that today. We are going to be talking about build tool plugins. So um, as you can see, a bit of characteristic here. Uh, they are being they are being fired automatically during the build or pre-build phases. Uh, they can invoke executables, output files of those command line plugins. Uh, they common tool uh, build tool plugins. Sorry about that. So uh, they um, are stored with other build artifacts, not among package sources. And uh, they run in a sandbox, which uh, prevents any changes to a uh, source files. So with that build tool plugin, your S, all of that stuff is run, is being actually executed inside of the sandbox, uh, which is defined by a, like a specific shell script inside of the uh, package sources. Uh, you won't be able to make any changes to a package itself. You will be able to uh, save any files or do any kind of file generations only into temporary folder or um, or some kind of build um, build folders, which are like actually designed partially for that. Uh, so creating a plugin is not hard at all. Ah, maybe. <laughs> uh, let's try that out. So um, we are still in the same project, which is our um, project from the. Um, previous steps. Uh, and so on the left hand, I hope you guys here see that. <laughs> um, so we will have to create a few uh, folders. In here, we create a folder which is named plugins. And we put a file which is called plugin name, let it be like that, inside. Then we go further and we create a folder which is called executables. Uh, we place a folder inside, which is called my executable, and place a file, which is called main. Uh, all of the executables, they should be called main. And if you want to distinguish like between executables, you will have to place them in separate folders. Uh, that's like how they operate. Uh, we go further, and we have to make some changes into our uh, package.swift file, which is the manifest for this particular package. Um, you see that... Um, right here and let's zoom a bit and uh, 
actually take a closer look. So uh, I've created a few variables here. One is going to be uh, for executable name and another one for plugin name. I have those duplicated. Uh, as you can see, I use them in a couple of places. And due to that, I've decided to place them into separate, uh, into separate constants. So if I change something, then I don't have to change it in few places. Um, I have an executable target here. I add that into, as you can see, I add executable target and plugin into my targets section. So those are going to be targets for this particular for this particular package. So executable target is going to have a name and a pass. So you can see on the left side, uh, the um, pass for that is going to be, well, actually located in sources slash executables. And I'm going to be um, having that as my executable because uh, I'm going to be reading that as my executable because it's defined here in the constant on the top. Uh, then I have a plugin as a separate, um, uh, let's call it an actor of uh, this target section. So what it's going to have? It's going to have a name, which is actually a plugin name defined on the top, a capability. Uh, you define that it's going to be a build tool. We've talked about uh, we've talked about that before. Those there there are build tools and command um, uh, command uh, line tools. And so uh, this one is a build tool. We have to define it in here. It has uh, dependencies, of course. It has a target, which is the executable. So the target of this particular plugin is an executable we define on the top. And as well, you have to define a pass because, well, I mean, all of that uh, uh, under the hood system stuff, uh, it has to know where we have this plugin located. And after you have your executable target and plugin defined as separate targets, you have to define a specific plugin for your target, which you are going to be importing into uh, actually your main project. So in here, we've conducted all of our settlements, which are to be conducted, and uh, we can play around. Well, again, but. Uh, of course, I'm not gonna like uh, show you what it's gonna ha what is gonna happen if I like start the project and run it because that's not gonna be fair. Let's go through a plugin first in order to have like a complete understanding of what's gonna be happening after I try to launch that. Uh, so that's gonna be a plugin file. What I have to do, I have to import a few libraries. One is uh, a foundation library, pretty obvious, and another one is a package plugin library. That's a library which is specifically designed for having all of the stuff related to plugins. Uh, then I define a plugin itself. So that's going to be a structure, and I have to create a structure, like a plugin name, and I have to confirm to a build tool plugin protocol. Uh, this particular protocol is going to tell me and is going to make me to um, implement this function, uh, which is, as you can see from the same nature, create build commands function. It's accepting the context and the target, and it returns the array of build commands. So what it does, it accepts the context from the system and the target to which this particular plugin is assigned, and it returns the array of build commands to the system. So the system knows what kind of commands this plugin wants to fire. We go further and we then see this uh, typecast. So what we do, we uh, define a source module target, and we take our uh, target, which comes uh, from the um, function parameter, and we cast it into source module uh, target instance. Uh, in in order to have something uh, further, some properties, I will show you that a bit later. Uh, if we are not able to cast that, we are throwing the plugin error that source module target cast fail. Those errors, they are um, uh, they are defined in the bottom of this uh, file. As you can see, that's an enumeration which confirms to an error protocol. So you are able, as it confirms to error protocol, it's uh, then can be true. Uh, we go further, and so then we create a few constants. One constant is designed to have a tool property. So tool is actually the executable which is created in the project folder so if you remember we've created a plugin and an executable so uh, what we do here we try to get a tool which is named my executable from the context after we have it we then can have uh, some stuff done with that but we will see it in the build command initializer and then we have an output 
output is actually the place in where we have we want to have our generated file to exist after it is being generated by the uh, by the system so how do we do that uh, we say that in the context there is a plugin work directory so the directory where the plugin operates and then we append generated that swift to it so this is just going to take a pass append generated that swift into it and then we will have the output pass into which we want um, to place our generated that swift file and then after that, after we have all of that stuff uh, created, we return an array of build commands. Well, that's an array, so uh, obviously it can have like five or 10 or however you want uh, build commands. Um, it consists of a few parts. So it should be displaying some name, which is just a message, which is gonna be displayed inside of the build uh, graph. I will show you then uh, what it gives to us, what kind of abilities it gives to us. Then, I pass an executable uh, tool dot with help of tool dot pass. So actually, what I'm telling here, all right, there is a build command, and this is the pass to the executable, which is to be fired by this particular build, build command. I pass the arguments inside of this build command, so then this build command can pass those arguments to the executable, and I pass the output files. So output files property defines actually the output into which I want to write all of my uh, all of my stuff, which is going to be created by the executable. Um, and so then the logical question: So what about the executable? Let's go through it first. Uh, so that's the whole code for the executable. So we define a so-called process info instance. So that's going to be just an info. And as well, we have arguments. And those are arguments, if you remember in the previous step, we've passed arguments on uh, line number three from a build command, like uh, argument, not an argument, but let's call it a parameter. Uh, number three from a build command initializer, um, uh, we've passed uh, arguments. So we've passed output.string and source module target that name. So that's gonna be string which defines our place where we want to store our output of the executable and uh, the name of our uh, source module target inside of which this plugin operates. Um, so we get it on line number five. We have our output pass and our module name and we have it from our process um, dot arguments um, array. So then we have our generated code. And that's literally just a string which is describing what kind of code is to be generated. So here, we just, that's gonna be the file. So that's the form of a file which is gonna be created here. So on the top, it has import for foundation statement because it will require that. Uh, then, uh, well, I mean, I guess even this one uh, won't require a foundation, but uh, yeah, anyway, you can, do that as well. Uh, and then it just defines a function, which is called a print package name. Uh, what it does, it just prints the string, package target name is module name. So you remember what module name is, uh, that's the name which is passed as a, a, target, um, a target source module name uh, from the plugin. And so then after we have that, so the generated file, well, I mean, let's call it a template for a generated file. Uh, we do that through a, that's, well, actually just a regular string API. Uh, we have our string and we can write the string to a URL. So URL is gonna be um, built on, basing on the output pass property, which is passed from a plugin. And so then we have our generated code. We know where we want to write it. So then we can write it and we do it in here. So what happens then? We can go to our um, Swift UI project, like the initial one, and uh, uh, in our on appear function, uh, besides uh, this uh, greet the world function, which uh, was present there from the beginning, well, I mean, after we placed that, of course, uh, we also um, call for that print package name function. And as you can see on the, um, uh, in the, um, in the console, it prints uh, package target name is package name target. And that's actually the target which is designed and which is defined as a um, target with that name. Um, if we try to jump to a definition of that print package name function, what we are gonna see, um, 
that's going to be just a regular generated.swift file, as you can see it in here. And that's going to have all of the stuff which has been placed in there with help of our generated functionality from an executable. So in this particular case, it has a public function print package name. And so then it prints uh, literally the string package target name is uh, package name target. So it operates like that. And if you uh, pay an attention to the string and actually to the path, which is um, uh, which leads us to this particular file, uh, you will see just generated, nothing else. I mean, it's not located, as you can see it in the left hand, it's not located inside of the project file, it's not located inside of the uh, all of the directories related to the project. And so you might ask here, of course, Maxim, how come that even possible? I mean, there is some kind of file which exists somewhere which does something and how is that possible that this file or the function from this particular file can be called from like our project directory from our swift UI view which has been presented initially uh, so let's analyze the build graph so inside of the build graph there are a few stages so um, those stages actually, well, include all of the stuff which is um, fired in order to um, build your project and start that. So in this particular case, we've uh, extended the, um, the step which is uh, dedicated to building a target, uh, build, uh, how was that called? Yeah, package name target. Uh, so all of the stuff which is expanded on the bottom is uh, related to that. So if we analyze what happens inside, then we can see that we run the custom shell script and it passes us a message uh, running my executable for uh, package name target. And that's the message you define inside of the build command um, or even inside of the, um, yeah, inside of the um, build command once you want uh, to uh, get some kind of script done. So. You run the script in here, then you can see that you are compiling generated.swift file. So uh, that's the place where this generated.swift file is being like generated and compiled and placed into the build graph. Um, after that, you are compiling the package itself. So uh, you are compiling package name.swift. And that's the file inside of which we've had this initial greet the world function. So if, for example, you need to generate some stuff and then use this generated stuff inside of your uh, package, so then you can definitely do that because all of the generated files, they get like compiled and created and placed into the build before uh, even the package itself uh, is um, being, um, being executed and all of the stuff which is placed inside of the package. So then if you go further, you can see that you are building a target test application. So that's the place where your application itself uh, is being executed. And so because of that order, you are able to guarantee that all of the generated stuff is for sure going to be available inside of your application. And so this way, uh, you can safely use that and um, uh, be sure that uh, you will have all of that functionalities available. So let's go through that uh, really quick. So we make absolutely sure we have all of that gathered. Uh, so there is an application. Uh, an application adds a package. A package inside can have a library. Well, it will have a library, which is going to have a target, um, which is going to have some executable stuff inside, which is to be placed inside of this library. Uh, <clears throat> a target can add a plugin. Uh, as you can see it in here, uh, adds is actually equal to runs. So if you add a plugin to a target, that does mean that this plugin is going to be executed when this target is being compiled. Uh, once the plugin is added to a target, then you need some kind of executable, which is to be, um, uh, to be executed uh, by this particular plugin. So as you can see it in the plugin section, it executes with help of a build command. 
And then, as you can see, um, like on the side of the arrow, it can pass arguments through a process. So you can then pass some kind of arguments from, arguments from plugin to executable uh, to a, that uh, global process variable. And uh, the executable is going to be running some code for you. And this code can even depend on those, uh, on those arguments which are being passed. Uh, so the next part of our presentation is going to be related to a specific uh, use case. So imagine there are um, a few targets inside of your application. Well, we will start, we will start with the fact that uh, there is an application. So uh, very simplified one, for the sake of simplicity, we've made it like this. So uh, there is a single application and you have multiple targets which are um, related to different countries. I mean, Italy, Spain, Portugal, uh, what common can we find here? I guess, well, you have some kind of food book, right? Those countries, they are uh, really popular for their like uh, cool uh, food stuff. And so, yeah, uh, let's imagine that uh, we have some kind of cookbook of Italian, Spanish, and Portug Portuguese uh, resources. So, yes, you have only one application. Well, indeed, you will actually want only one view to be responsible for uh, representing all of that. You will have to have uh, like one image, uh, one string, and so then you're just applying different colors to the string, and you're applying, well, I mean, different flag images to uh, those image views, which are placed in the center of the screen. I mean, this one is going to be uh, created with help of a Swift UI, so yeah, let's go with an image and a text. But uh, for the sake of uh, showing you the flexibility with resources, uh, this, those names, Italy, Spain, and Portugal, they are not, they are not text, so they are not text objects, they are images. So um, those are just plain white images which can be colored with the help of a specific color. So in Italy case green, in Spain case orange, and Portugal case red. So uh, for each target which is representing the country, each country, uh, you will have to have a set of resources. So you will have to have country color on the top. That's the unique color which is going to be applied to the text. You will have to have a primary background. That's the background of the application. You will have to have a country flag image, which is actually the image for a country flag. And, well, you will have to have an image which is uh, describing the text itself, which is a country name here. Um, one more thing to add about SPM and about how the resources can be managed inside of the packages. So there is an extension uh, which is called bundle, which exists inside of every SPM package. So uh, if you go and uh, try to create the uh, bundle with instance.module, then it will return you as actually system instance. Uh, as you can see in the description, it returns a resource bundle associated with the current Swift module. So that's going to be a bundle which is describing this particular package which you are trying to use. So in this particular case, you are trying to create the instance of a primary background color. That's a Swift UI color, just in case of a primary background color with a name from the bundle. Pretty plain stuff. Um, you are using that module bundle here <clears throat> in order to get that from uh, resources which are associated with uh, uh, this particular package. Like, I mean, from let's say from this uh, resource set. Uh, then you go further and more than likely, how are uh, you gonna be handling all of that stuff related to colors? So uh, you will more than likely, as you know, that you will have a different uh, targets. You will have some kind of shared variable, which is gonna be called, let's say environment. And uh, as you can see, that's defined in the bottom here. We have enumeration environment, which defines either Italy, Spain, or Portugal. So you will have it in here. You are gonna be injecting that, passing that to initializer or whatever. Uh, so this public structure colors will have this environment um, uh, environment constant. So then you are able to use it inside in order to define what kind of constant and what kind of environment, environment all of the stuff is happening inside. Uh, so you will have some kind of like static variable more than likely. It's going to be a computed variable, which is going to be switching through the environment in case of Italy, is going to be returning your country Italy color in event, etc. 
Spain, then country Spain, Portugal, uh, then country Portugal. And all of them are going to be defined in here. So you will have three private instances. One is going to be describing the color, which is the country uh, color. Uh, the second one is going to be describing the country color Spain. And the third one, the country color for a Portugal. And you will have to, uh, and you will place them, all of them, into one particular uh, target, into one particular SPM package. So if you place all of them into one package, uh, you manage them like that, that's going to work, indeed. But there are a few problems in here. Uh, and as it's mentioned in here, there are a few issues with that approach. So if you store all of the resources in one single module, in one single bundle, then your application size, well, obviously, is going to significantly increase because all of the resources are stored inside of the same package. And due to that, you import into every build, you import all of the resources which are related to all of the countries. And so that like doubles, triples uh, your application size, which is, well, not <laughs> acceptable for sure. Uh, then your code becomes dirtier and so, because every time you add a resource, you will have to add like separate properties for that particular resource, and you have to add this uh, property with a switch, which defines, uh, depending on the target, what kind of resource you are trying to return. And well, maintaining the code gets more complicated, because well, yeah, the, the more code you have, the harder to handle that. Um, so our main purpose is here, solving this task, is to avoid imported, importing unneeded resources. So the application, the target for Italy, doesn't need resources for Spain and Portugal, and well, vice versa. Portugal doesn't need Italy and Spain. Spain doesn't need um, uh, Italy and Portugal. And so, of course, make our, our code as clean as possible. You want to make as like little duplications as possible. Uh, you want to avoid all of those switches, and preferably, uh, you would like to have all of this stuff uh, generated like under the hood for you. And uh, let me share the screen. Uh, Vita, please yeah. help us to get the screen shared. So um, yeah, let's try to go into the project and see what kind of solution we are able to have. Great. Okay. Is it okay? Right. And I mean, yeah. that's been translated. All right. Yep. All right. Cool. Thanks a lot. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, so as we've seen, our examples uh, of pictures, how we want that uh, stuff to appear to us. So what we want to get? We want to get um, one Swift UI content view. Uh, so as you can see, this content view is a view is a view uh, compliant, so it has to have a body. Well, I mean, regular Swift UI stuff. And uh, so inside, you're going to be having a Z stack, and that Z stack is going to have a primary background in it and a V stack. This V stack with a space in 50 is going to have images.country flag and images.country name. So that's country name, the little reminder that's the image which is responsible for. Uh, having the name on the bottom. And uh, you will be um, giving the color to this image with help of this uh, foreground color view modifier uh, from colors.country. So 
then you have this application, a Swift UI application, and uh, as we've discussed, you have three targets. You have Spain, Spain app, uh, Italy app, and Portugal app. So, well, I mean, obviously, if you try to get it reloaded, it's being reloaded right now. And so um, all of the resources are being taken uh, from I mean, some kind of storage under the hood. And, um, and yeah, and uh, you have your application built. So if you try to open the Portugal app and try to build the target for the Portugal app, then you will have all of this stuff, again, built for you. You are changing nothing in your content view, and uh, you are getting all of the resources uh, from, uh, from the box. Uh, so let me just try to close that so we go step by step and see what kind of stuff happens here. So um, well, let's go from the view lawyer, I guess. Um, you have your uh, primary background. So as you remember, this primary background is going to be common for all of the targets. Uh, that was the same. So um, in here, we have uh, this property defined. And if we go inside, then we see that this primary background, uh, it is uh, created inside of the public structure colors, which uh, has a section for shared resources and section for targeted resources. So um, that static property primary background, it's a color property which takes primary background from module bundle. So we know what module bundle is. That's a bundle which is uh, assigned to this particular module. And uh, there is another color, which is a country color which is going to be like orange for Spain, uh, green for Italy, and red for Portugal. So that's going to be a specific color related to this particular country. So as you can see, that's a country color. It takes a color with name country color from a bundle, country resources. So this country resources bundle, we will have to go to that uh, in a little bit. Um, then, then, if you go back, uh, we have to analyze images as well. So we have a few images here. Uh, so, for example, country flag image. The pretty much the um, example is going to be the same. We have a country flag image which is taken country flag, um, the image named country flag from bundle country resources and country name from again bundle country resources. So, of course, the obvious question here: How to achieve that? Uh, because that looks kind of cool. You don't have to repeat anything. You don't have to duplicate. Uh, you don't have to write the same things um, twice. You just have uh, <clears throat> same content view. Uh, you define same variables. And uh, even inside of those variables, you don't have to um, you don't have to override any kind of stuff. You don't have any switches. You don't have to depend on environment. You don't. You you have to do nothing pretty much. You just have to handle that and take that from this uh, magical country resources bundle. And somehow, all of the stuff under the hood is being taken from this bundle country resources. But um, let's go further in order to see what happens here. So. We have our folder resources inside of our country's resources package. We have our folder resources, as you can see that on the left side. Uh, we have countries and countries resources folder. So countries folder is representing all of the countries, all of the targets, which are potentially, well, I mean, not potentially, but are going to be placed inside of this particular package. And as well, you have countries resources. That's going to be the main target which is responsible for handling all of the resources from all of the countries. So uh, there are, as you can see, a few folders in here, folder colors and folder images, and the shared media assets file. So colors and images, we are acquainted with them already. We've seen that. But there is a shared media folder. So as I know, that the background color is going to be shared for all of the applications, I can place it to so-called shared media because it's going to be the same, the common one for all of the targets uh, for both Italy and Portugal and for Spain as well. But there are some resources as images and colors which are not specific for um, like for the uh, wall uh, common reusable functionality, which are actually specific for uh, those particular targets. So. Let's try to analyze the structure here and see how that looks like. Uh, every folder which is representing the resources for, um, for actually every uh, target which is present inside of this particular package is going to be uh, well, respectively called. So for example, in Italy resources, 
we will have to have a dummy file that's going to be just empty that Swift file because package is going to require you to have at least one Swift file in every um, uh, target you have. So you are not able just to create an um, assets file and have it in there. You will have to create some kind of dummy file as well. Assets file, that's just a regular assets file. Inside you have a country color, inside of the color fo colors folder. Uh, and as well, you have country flag and uh, country name images, which describe uh, the stuff I've shown you before. So the Portugal media is going to look like that. We will have the um, color, uh, country flag, and country name. And as well, we will have a Spain folder, which is going to have resources dedicated to Spain. Um, then we have those resources placed inside of our package, but we will have to manage them. Because as we've told, we don't want all of the resources to be placed inside of a build. So we want, for example, Portugal target, as we have selected right now, we want only, well, obviously, Portugal resources to be placed inside of the build. Um, so if we go further and try to look how all of that um, country bundle file and uh, country resources bundle uh, works, we can go further and uh, try to see what happens here. So. That's some kind of country resource variable, uh, not a variable, a constant, uh, which is of type bundle and uh, which is located inside of the file, which is called bundle plus country, uh, country resources that's worth. Well, uh, what happens if I try to go into the definition of this file? Hmm, what I have here. There is a property which is called country resources, as we know. Uh, as we know. It has a potential resource bundles array and it has Italy resources, Spain resources, and Portugal resources string inside. Hmm. Uh, what it can be describing? Yeah, that looks like our targets, which are present inside of our um, package. Uh, so what it returns then? It returns, it takes those potential bundles, it runs a compact map on them, and there is a kind of... Uh, I would say tricky part in here, but um, you have to run it if you want to achieve the behavior we've talked about that. So what do you do here? Uh, you take a bundle, a module uh, instance of this bundle, you take the URL of this module instance, and uh, then you get absolute string in which you are replacing occurrences of countries that bundle with actually that shortcut that bundle. Uh, that dollar uh, zero shortcut, uh, that bundle. So what you're going to be doing here, you are iterating with a compact map uh, through a potential bundles array, through a potential bundles array, you get the URL uh, from each of those bundles you create in here. Well, I mean, that's a string. From each string, you try to get the URL. URL is defined in here, just in case. That's a file private extension, which returns you the URL, like, based on the string, which is passed. That's an extension to a string. So once you have those um, URLs in here, well, actually, actually, the thing is that's worth mentioning that um, this one in here is going to be returning you strings. So it's going to be, in this particular case, it's going to return you uh, just three strings. And those strings are going to be addresses, well, I mean, paths, passes to, um, to some bundles, potential bundles, as you can see here, which can possibly be in your uh, particular build. So uh, in here, on this step, you will have to have, you will have three URLs. After that, you will run one more compact map with help of and with help of bundle initializer, you will be trying to create a bundle with uh, this particular string, which is uh, um, going to be produced on the previous step. And for the bundle instance, which is like capable of being created with the uh, help of that approach, you will just have to take, you will just take first of that because, well, actually, obviously, you will have only one of them because uh, it will create a bundle only for a valid instance of the bundle, which 
like exists. So if you, for example, run a Portugal app, then you will have uh, only a Spain, um, yeah, a Portugal resources bundle because you are running the Portugal uh, resources target. You, uh, for example, Italy resources and Spain resources are not going to produce uh, the bundle because the bundle is not going to exist. So in this case, uh, you know that uh, you are going to be getting the bundle, which is uh, actually the bundle which leads to a particular instance which is created for uh, one of your targets in here. But good question is, how do we get this array? I mean, is it getting a hard-coded or we just placed uh, place this array into like uh, our uh, our project and then it exists and uh, uh, you have that uh, extension <clears throat> statically for every build you have? Well, you could do that. You could just get it hard-coded, place in your inside of your package and uh, have it like here. But, well, it gives you less flexibility, I would say. Because if you add some targets inside of your uh, package, then you will have to mutate that. And uh, also, mm, the more um, of um, the more of a flexibility you have, uh, well, I mean, the uh, more comfortable you will uh, feel. Because why? Why I tell that? Uh, because as you can see on the top, um, it's not located in our inside of our project. So. As we've uh, generated that Swift file, which we've seen uh, when I was uh, uh, telling you about uh, how plugins work and how they generate files, uh, this one is located uh, somewhere nowhere. So, based on that, we know that this file has been generated for us. How that happened? Um, we can go to our exec plugins and executables folder in order to see how that happened. But first, let's go to our package in order to see what kind of uh, stuff is actually happening inside of this uh, particular project. So uh, we know already that we can define multiple uh, multiple variables and multiple um, um, properties in order to describe any stuff we want inside of our package file. Because, well, eventually a uh, package that's Swift, it's just a Swift file. You can define properties, functions, and whatever you want from like Swift syntax. So then I create a package. That's a package manifest, which describes this country's uh, resources package. So it has a name, we know that. And also, it, as you can see, it has a platforms defined. As inside of this package, I use Swift UI stuff, particularly for creating Swift UI colors and images. Uh, compiler will require me to tell that this is going to be used only for iOS version, which supports Swift UI. Because uh, without that, that's well, I mean, likely that's not going to compile. Um, there is an next section here, which is called products. So in those products section, we uh, actually declare our products, which are going to be imported into every target of our application, which are not going to be imported, but let's say added into every target of our application. So library Italy resources is going to be added inside of our Italy app. A library Spain resources inside of our Spain app and for, Port for Portugal as well. And then every of those libraries um, has two targets. So it has a target to country resources and a target to uh, Italy resources library it has uh, Italy resources target and then so on uh, for Spain as well and for Portugal as well. So then after that, we can shift to our target section and analyze what happens here. So uh, we'll go from top to bottom. Uh, there is a target, which is a target for country's resources. So um, uh, it has a pass, uh, which is a resources pass, country's resources. So country's resources, I'm sorry, uh, almost all of them are named uh, in the same way as uh, um, strings. They contain, so you can just rely on that. Uh, so yeah, country's resources are is a target which uh, describes <laughs> this particular folder, country resources here. Then it has a pass, a resource pass. Resources pass is the pass uh, to sources slash resources here. So that's going to go here and here. And the country's resources are located in here. So that's going to be this target, which is like a shared target for the for this package. It has a dependency on the plugin. 
So the plugin, which is going to be a bundle identifier plugin. We will go to that next. Then uh, those are kind of plain. We have three targets, and each of them is describing separate targets which exist ex inside of our particular package. So Italy resources target it has its pass. Uh, um, uh, Spain resources target has its pass. And well, Portugal as well. Then we have executable target, which is a executable for uh, this particular plugin, which is going to be operating uh, inside of our main uh, target. And we have a plugin as well. We uh, define it in here. I'm not going to be like diving deep in, inside of that declaration because that's absolutely the same as we've seen that on the uh, section when we were uh, discussing plugins and how they work with executables. So, um, but just to recap, uh, the main target is a country resources. It has a plugin, plugin is here, plugin has a dependency on the bundle identifier executable, and every time. So, based on that structure, we can say that every time the country's resources target, so that's gonna be, uh, this one is going to be like, compiled and executed. So the plugin attached to it, the bundle identifier plugin is going to launch. And as well, uh, one more statement to make here, as every library, so every product of this particular package has two target dependencies, one on country's resources and another one on a specific country resources, so Italy, Spain, and Portugal. So then if you add this particular library to a target of the application, then you are going to be able to import all of the stuff which uh, exists inside of those targets, which go with uh, that library. So as we know all of that, we have to, before we dive into uh, the um, uh, plugin and executable, let's go to the, um, now let's go to a uh, plugin and executable, and then we will go to the pro project itself. So uh, plugin is a very, very similar to the one we've seen already. Um, a bundle identifier plugin confirms the build tool plugin protocol. It has type aliases. So uh, this function declaration uh, becomes shorter and, well, more readable, I would say. Uh, then we do the same stuff. We try to uh, cast the source module target. We get the tool, which is a bundle identifier tool we've seen before. We get the output, which is the output into inside of which this uh, plugin operates. And then we have our, our all possible bundles. And those all possible bundles are bundles we've seen inside of our um, country's uh, resources bundle, uh, which has been generated. So. Uh, if you take a closer look into that, we get that from context.package.products. So all of the products which are related to this particular package. And we get an array to a flat map and we go to targets of uh, actually each product. We map a name from each target and we filter. So we don't get, have that source uh, module target that name. That's going to be the country's resources, like the main target we are running. And as well, we are filtering through um, that to avoid the executable getting into all possible bundles because, well, um, we, we don't need that. And then we return the command, which is, uh, again, looking almost the same as the previous one I've shown you. Um, but just the arguments we are passing is going to include the source module target that name, output string into where we want to uh, have all of that stuff uh, generated, and well, all possible bundles. So right now, after we've um, investigated the plugin, we can go to the executable itself. But again, it looks very similar to the one we've been uh, seeing before. So. We create a process info instance and we get our arguments from the process info instance. After that, we have our bundle extension code. That's, as in previous case, is just going to be the simple string which is going to be um, describing the code to be generated and then to be placed into the build. So, important foundation. And um, yeah, I'm not going to go like line by line because we've seen the country's resources file itself already and so we don't have to uh, like analyze it here but just a few minor things to discuss so as you can see uh, potential 
resource bundles are gonna uh, are uh, are being created with uh, possible bundles dot description. So possible bundles is on uh, array, and um, as you are getting the description of that, it's gonna give you like uh, the array itself. Uh, and if you like, if generated code looks like that. So then if you go to code itself, which is to be generated, so that's going to be the result. So the array which is to be placed, description is going to generate like the array itself um, in here. And uh, here, uh, here, one more string interpolation is to be applied. So resources target bundle, that's the target bundle, which is running this particular plugin. So as you can see here, we are passing that through a interpolation, through string in interpolation. But in here, in uh, country resources, we have it as a country, a country's resources dot bundle. So that's this main bundle like of this uh, particular application and this particular uh, Swift package we have. So. As we have that, we have this uh, bundle extension uh, file to generate. We can then write it into our output pass. And uh, this output pass is the pass which is to be used in order to um, yeah, place this generated code inside. Um, and so that's pretty much it. We have our plugins, we have our executables, and we have all of our uh, resources described in here. And um, if we go to packages example, like the project itself, you will see that we have three targets, Italy application target, Spain application target, and Portugal application target. And so Portugal app is going to import the Portugal resources. So that's the library which describes Portugal resources. Spain app, Spain resources. Italy app, Italy resources. Going a bit back, we know that there are three libraries and those they are. So in simple words, when target inside of the main project, when Italy app target imports the Italy resources library, then we can state that here is, here is it, this library, it gets two targets, countries resources and Italy resources. And so then uh, it, can, it can be using the code from them. And as it gets this country's uh, resources uh, target with it, it can go, it can get all of the code from inside. And so here uh, you describe colors and here you describe images. And so this is the way how all of that magic happens with uh, not duplicating, not having all of the stuff uh, like written twice or three times. You don't have to declare like every property inside of every target here and like try to exclude them uh, from a build or something. You just do it like this. You just actually, if you have more resources to add, if you have like one more image or whatsoever, one more color, you add it here, you add it here, you add it in here into media and as well you will have to describe it inside of the colors structure itself only in one place instead of three uh, how it could be happening if you were doing that um, uh, through the approach of uh, uh, having different resources for um, uh, for that stuff and so just to make absolutely sure and just uh, to show you that I'm not uh, playing around with uh, having that in the bundle, let me show you the archive. So there is a Portugal application. Let's uh, prepare the archive for that. So how it's going to look like if we try to ship it, if we try to distribute that. So there is a Portugal app archive. If I show it in Finder, uh, it's visible. Cool. If I show it in Finder and if I show package contents of that, I go to products. Uh, let me close this one. I go to <laughs> applications and there is an application for Portugal app, which is to be like sent. If I show package contents of uh, this app, uh, you can see all of the stuff which is placed uh, inside. And there are two bundles in here. One bundle is created for bundle um, for countries resources. That's going to be uh, one bundle for one target. And another bundle is created for countries resources, uh, Portugal resources. So those are Portugal resources which are placed inside of the Portugal uh, application target. So if you show package contents in here, and that's going to be the assets.car file, that's the file which is like um, 
uh, let's say encrypted file for uh, resources when they are being sent uh, to make like a build and to, to ship that. And so if you try to open it with help of text edit, you can try to uh, show for country color, for example. And yeah, that remains, uh, that gives you a bit of human readability still. So you can see the country color is placed into that uh, resources folder and uh, it's it's being placed only once. So that's going to be only one resource and one bundle which is going to be generated for countries resources and so yes, that's going to be only one bundle then all of the resources for um, for Portugal and for uh, Italy are not going to be placed into the build with uh, Portugal resources and so this way you are not going to be like spending a lot of um, space and you are going to be uh, using and utilizing only the resources which are required for uh, your particular target of uh, the application. I mean, depending on what's uh, been built and what's being shipped. Um, I guess that's it. Um, from my side, <laughs> um, I have... Uh, yeah, I have no more topics to discuss. I'm done. So maybe you guys have some questions regarding what's uh, what has been discussed uh, during today's talk. Now, what is the goal of using yeah, by the way, that's a good question. I'm not really uh, sure that you have to use it in here. That's just a force of the habit. So, I mean, um, I'm more than likely that you will not have to place it in here because this package, that Swift file, it's not going to be visible for other files inside of, uh, even inside of that, um, even inside of this uh, uh, package. But, well, I mean, is any kind of, um, is any kind of, uh, uh, access level uh, declaration in Swift. By that, if somebody else comes here and thinks, all right, what are those properties? Hmm, they are internal. So more than likely that does mean that they are needed somewhere else. But if you declare them as file private, that's like um, another good side of having uh, some stuff declared with help of access levels because you tell by that to other developers that, all right, this stuff is needed exclusively in this file, so you cannot go somewhere else, look for something else, and, uh, well, I mean, this one is not going to be used outside. I mean, yeah, I'm like 95% sure that it has no functional uh, goal, but just for the sake of making things more understandable for other developers, I would say that I'd keep it like that. Wait, where is, by the way? Yeah. It looks like oh, yeah. it's for resources, but it may be useful for some code uh, generated costs. Now, when you want to depend on the time, because resources have a lot of different things. For example, the amount of resources you might have to all my images, all my assets, I can put the resource, and uh, if you really don't want it, right? So, from that store, uh, when you download the application, for example. And uh, <laughs> I will not do this on the complicated stuff. Yeah, indeed, that's, that's possible. I mean, that's just. Thank, thank you for this like statement. I, I mean, indeed, and more than likely, uh, all of those packages, uh, you can have uh, it handled with help of, so for example, you place some resources inside of your, um, inside of your package, and you have this option in here. Which is the option? Oh, you don't see it, guys. Well, I mean, there is a. Mm, sorry about that, but uh, there is a button localized. So you place it in here, and depending on the localization of your application, you can then select a specific localization for this particular like resource. And uh, well, in this particular case, you have uh, this application localized only for English. But then you can, for example, try to localize it for other languages and uh, try to add other resources. I'm not really sure if that's going to work out with uh, help with the. Um, like with this specific, um, um, with help, like in this specific context. But uh, yeah, there are indeed other ways how you can achieve this goal. But that's just one of the uh, one of the ways how you can do that. How you can save some time just by like getting the infrastructure prepared, 
But then, and then, well, I mean, having only uh, the duty of just adding resources, it's, I mean, of course, you will have to figure out, for example, there are some cases when you have some resource in one application, right, for example, for Italy, and you don't have the resource for uh, Spain or for Portugal. And so you will have to handle that. Of course, for sure, uh, you will make... Uh, Mm, something uh, then you will of course you will have to figure something out in order to handle that case but but yeah i mean that still gives you some kind of flexibility and that's just one of the ways how that stuff can be handled yeah. also i then tried the multiple targets uh, every uh, with this somehow and uh, have only one target and pass arguments for the country through the groups arguments and somehow uh, you mean uh, have like only one? <clears throat> one main target for the application. Okay, inside and of the package. Have a different uh, group shows and pass from the country like another. You mean to the uh, to the package file, to package the Swift, or to which one? To the top level application. All right. So in here, you mean? Yeah, idea to have only one target here. Okay. And we have different groups shows. Okay. Ah, yeah, I get, I get that now. But yeah, unlikely the. Um, because if we get uh, one more country, we should uh, create the new target, uh, the new uh, library to target. Yeah, unlikely uh, Swift package is not going to eat that. <laughs> I mean, you are not you are not able to pass. Uh, an argument so i mean uh, swift package that's uh, about the solid and about the dependency inversion so if you have for example different schemas in your main application and so then you have a swift package which has uh, like multiple right targets or even one target only so if you let a swift package know about the schema which is being used well i mean technically it's impossible <laughs> first of all you are not able to share that um, it, like among the uh, application and uh, Swift package. But uh, moreover, by letting <laughs> the application um, know what kind of schema is being executed, uh, by, by letting the, the package know what kind of schema is being executed in the application, you are breaking that uh, uh, like principle of not uh, depending uh, on, uh, I would say, more higher higher level instances by lower level instances because here the package is like just basically dependency a lower level instance and the application itself is like a higher level instance and if you make it like this then you let know the package about the schema uh, so there is a dependency and well vice versa the dependency is going to exist as well and uh, yeah you will but our package is uh, generated not generated using evaluation so we, uh, <laughs> that's why we create this uh, plugin. So we can use plugin to pass this uh, arguments inside the only one uh, library that has only one library. I guess um, maybe I'm not getting the point uh, fully, but the thing is, um, package is not able to get any kind of stuff from the application in which it's being compiled. So you will not be able to like get some kind of runtime variables or whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, you mean that? Ah, well, uh, the thing is you have the arguments for the executable, but um, let me open that. Uh, yeah, the plugin, you will be able to get the context and you will be able to get the target. But the target is a plugin target, and the context is the plugin context. And both of those um, input parameters, they have no idea what's going on in the main application. So you are able to pass only something related to a package or to the initial stuff which is used for build, but not about like the project itself. And maybe not unlikely, maybe unlikely. <laughs> But, but yeah, I mean, I would say, yeah, I mean, again, that's just the way how you can handle that. If you have one more country, then, uh, yeah, you will have to have uh, one more 
target in your main application and as well you will have to have one more target in here you will create one more target and you will just basically add this target in here you will you will add a library you will have a target which depends uh, which on which this library depends on and yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much it and then you will just yeah you know assets have the assets which are related to the specific to this specific target i mean again this is the way how to how you can arrange them. Do you use such approach in production? No. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, uh, there is no uh, information about test targets. Do you want to work on test targets also? Is this could be related? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can go here and uh, in targets. Uh, yeah, 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 there is a somewhere you can define that, all right. Um, yeah, 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 test target. Uh, yeah, I, I know, I know that you can um, yeah, you can get it defined, but I'm not really sure if um, um, yeah, there. Well, I mean, it's gonna yell on us whatever I do because it doesn't. Ah, yeah, maybe by the way, it has test, it has auto generated stuff. Um, I haven't uh, checked if all of that stuff is going to be um, capable of uh, being tested with help of uh, some kind of unit tests or integration tests or uh, something. But um, I see no reason why not, because uh, you anyway, more than likely, you will not write the test uh, like taking as a testable instance the application or the package itself. You are going to be writing that for a specific unit. I don't know, for maybe a view, a Swift UI view or whatsoever. And so then you can just basically with uh, this particular approach, right? You have your uh, structure colors. You can create inside of the test if you write some I don't know, integration test. Uh, you can create colors uh, variable in here in test target. You can import your um, build and you can import your target. I mean, you can uh, create your color structure. And so then you can pretty much try to access those same variables. And uh, I see no reason why they are not going to return you the same result as they would return inside of the, inside of the main application. Is this not for the test uh, Executed. Uh, you mean like uh, if I am able to know that? So we will create a unit test, and I want to just get some country color or country image or whatever. And after that, just to understand if for this current country, the image is correct, and that correct uh, instance of library was executed, and the correct code was was like executed to uh, generate the set. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. Um, uh, you should be able to, but I haven't checked that. Uh, when you are importing something, then you are getting the um, uh, you are actually getting both of um, targets which go with a library. So once you create your test. Uh, target in here, you are going to be importing the um, libraries inside of that. And libraries are going to have both um, of uh, those um, uh, targets. So library is going to have target resources and Portugal resources target. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess you should be able to check that out. Also, will it work with propagation? Uh, can it generate Another switch package from existing. Mm. If I have uh, like another layer of that's uh, <laughs> that's an ambitious plan, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, I'm I'm not sure. You are indeed able to generate uh, uh, text files, uh, shell scripts, and you are even able to run those shell scripts. So. From the plugin, you can generate .sh file. You can place any kind of uh, um, bash code inside, and then uh, you can run that from the uh, from um, 
uh, from from this package. I mean, you will be really limited by file creation, removing, or a lot of stuff which is related to a sandbox because you are sandbox inside of it. Uh, but uh, talking about the package, I mean. Again, I see no reason why not, because the package itself, it's just actually the folder, which has uh, all of the files, just the Swift files, a package manifest is the is the is just the Swift file, which describes the package. So I see no reason why you are not able to generate a folder, because you can create library, you can create uh, directories, you can create files. Well, that makes you capable of creating the... Um, uh, the package itself. I mean, will it uh, work out and will it uh, get it into the build or not? That's another question. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, indeed, like the package itself, yeah, I mean, this is just a regular folder. Mm -hmm. Nothing special about that. But but again, one more thing to be checked. <laughs> um, all right, uh, maybe that would be appropriate to check if there are some questions from um, our online <coughs> guys. But uh, Victor is uh, somewhere, <laughs> and uh, I'm not really sure how I am able uh, how I am able to get that checked. Unlikely. For plugin, not anything about environment. So we have for like different building environments, uh, this production, uh, the bug environment. Uh, no, they, they are environment uh, independent. So you are not able to like to, to know what kind of environment it's going to be executed for. Oh, Victor, one, one second. Uh, can we somehow check if uh, some somebody from online... Uh, oh, YouTube is present. Yeah. Oh, right. Do you see? So it's YouTube comment chat? section. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, there are no comments on that. Yeah. No, somebody is uh, saying thank you for the presentation. You are welcome. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, and so answering the question, sorry about that, because I had to like uh, check maybe um, somebody is willing to ask something as well. And yeah, I mean, those, uh, yeah, yeah, answering the um, question regarding the um, having, regarding having the, um, like either the debug or production or test build, uh, yeah, they, uh, on, on the stage of uh, running the plugin, you are not able to check that out, unlike. Or maybe, well, I mean, maybe I'm not really sure if that's the, uh, right approach to give you as much flexibility to uh, like be able to check that as well, but that's thing to discuss for sure. All right. So, any other questions? Maybe guys from uh, online uh, online streaming. Maybe somebody wants to ask something as well. If you do, please write into the YouTube chat. <coughs> I know in other cases when we can use this uh, technology. <laughs> Any except uh, the assets and resources. You can define yourself. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, and I mean, as I advised, you can generate, uh, uh, you can generate even assets itself. Uh, there is a framework, I guess it's called R or something, and it gives you the possibility. It generates uh, names depending on assets uh, you have in the, um, um, in the, in, inside of your package. And actually this framework, our framework uses the, the technology of plugins. It analyzes, it can get like a list of all of the files which are present inside of the package. It can see that, all right, this one is an asset file. So depending on the asset file, it can generate, take a JSON from that because like under the hood there is a JSON. It can um, like transmit the JSON into a Swift file, like a real Swift file, and then it can produce you the like 
the way and, and so it, it will actually it can replace that stuff it can replace uh public structure colors we have right now it can just uh, generate the variables and instances for colors images uh, i don't know what else can you place fonts i guess uh, all of the stuff you can place inside of the um inside of the assets and yeah as uh, you've mentioned absolutely you can generate swift files you can generate uh, the shell scripts you can generate uh, plain text files JSONs. i mean whatever you want and for our video can replace rb's uh, xopt as i remember and you have access to the image uh, not image as a uh, source as well as like that and it will generate your viable resources I mean, Alright, I mean that's even makes that even easier. I mean, you will have to uh, figure out how to deal with that country resources bundle, but still, I mean, even that file can be generated for uh, with help of with help of some kind of plugin. I mean, yeah, and actually, the thing is, uh, all of the topic is uh, uh, on the like besides just. Uh, telling you about the specific use case or uh, specific technology. That's just maybe if some of you are not familiar with how all of those plugins work, how that stuff can be used, that's just some example of how flexible you can be with help of all of that functionality. I mean, you are given with, uh, because, well, I mean, all of the plugin stuff is kind of fresh. Uh, it has been presented in WWDC uh, 2022, if I remember correctly. So it's kind of fresh. Uh, some people are not familiar with that, so that's just one more purpose of that meetup, just to show you um, that there is a lot of stuff you are able to get uh, accomplished with help of um, with help of this new functionality. Yeah, and that's just one of the use cases. By the way, we will share this piece of code somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that should be available in the. There is a YouTube uh, presentation in um, which is actually binded and connected to this meetup. And so, as I know, slides are going to be present. And uh, yeah, I can upload a Xcode project as well. But it's not a problem for me. Yeah, I mean, so I guess if we have no more questions, we can wrap this up. Okay. So, yeah, thank you guys for your attention. It was cool, I guess, to talk thank about. You, All right. Should I do something here or? OK. It's all done.